In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the Sharpe Ratio. So the Sharpe Ratio measures the risk to reward of a portfolio. So here's the formula. We take the excess return of the portfolio, which is the expected return of the portfolio P minus the risk-free rate of return. And we take that excess return and we divide it by the volatility of the portfolio. Remember, volatil volatility is a measure of total risk. And we calculate it with the standard deviation of the expected returns of the portfolio. So the standard deviation of the returns, that's the volatility. So excess return of the portfolio divided by volatility of the portfolio, that gives us our Sharpe ratio. Okay, so let's do a quick example. So if we have an expected return for the portfolio of 14%, and then we see that the risk-free rate of uh, return is 4%, and we have volatility of 20% for the portfolio, we just go and we just plug in our formula here, and we can very easily calculate the Sharpe ratio. So res expected return of the portfolio, 14% minus a risk-free rate of 4%, that's 10% divided by 20% volatility. So 10% divided by 20% is 0 0.5. Okay, so we have a Sharpe ratio of 0 0.5. Now, what do we do with this? We can use the Sharpe ratio to rank different portfolios. So if you pick, if you have two portfolios and one of them has a sharp ratio you, that, that's higher than the other, you say, oh, I'm getting more reward per unit of volatility from the portfolio with the higher sharp ratio. So if we had another, so you got this portfolio, uh, let's say is 0.5, and then we've got another one is 0.3, you're getting more reward per unit of risk from this portfolio than you are from this portfolio. So I'm thinking of it as more bang for your buck in terms of reward or payoff uh, for the risk that you're bearing. So we can compare portfolios, we can rank them. For example, if you've seen the capital market line, let me just show you how it works with the capital market line. Let's say we had a portfolio where we we're just thinking about two different stocks. We have stock A and then stock B and different combinations, different weights where we say, okay, 90% in stock uh, of the portfolios in stock A, 10% is in, in B, 80, 20, 50, 50, and so forth. Okay, so we've got this different, this line here represents the volatility in the expected returns. We just plot those for each of the different weightings. So we say, okay, 90, 10, let's say that's right here, 80, 20, that could be here, and so forth. So we're just plotting all these different combinations. In the purple part of the line, this is the efficient frontier. So these are efficient uh, portfolios, and then we have inefficient portfolios here. Now, that, that's not, you know, check out my other video on that if you, if you don't quite understand what an efficient portfolio is. I made a video on that. But I want to show you, so when we take the risk-free rate of return, so let's say we've got a risk-free rate of return, let's say it's like 3% or something like that right there. And then we draw a line, let me change color. So we draw a line here that is just tangent like this. And now this line, so this is called the, this is the capital market line the CML. So this line is a combination where we say, okay, we're not just going to allow in the portfolio to have stock A and stock B. We'll ha also have some of the risk-free investment. So now you can have three different, you can have the stock A, stock B, and some of the risk-free investment. And so that's along this line. These are all efficient portfolios that include some combination of the three of these. Now, here's where this comes back to the Sharpe ratio and why the Sharpe ratio is relevant. The point of tangency right here so this is just where the capital market line touches the efficient frontier okay so we call that the tangent portfolio or if all the assumptions of the capital asset pricing model are met this tangent portfolio would also be the market market portfolio and it just so happens to be the portfolio right here where this this capital market line touches the efficient frontier that is the portfolio with the highest sharp ratio Okay, so this, this market portfolio has the highest Sharpe ratio. So that is the one that investors would choose. If they're rational, they say, hey, I'm getting the most reward per unit of risk if I choose this portfolio right here. So another thing, you could also think about the Sharpe ratio. You could, you could see it in a number of different ways, and you could see it as the number of standard deviations by which the portfolio's return would need to fall in order for the portfolio to actually underperform the risk-free investment. And so when we had the, the before I calculated the Sharpe ratio of 0.5, so that would say, okay, for the portfolio that had a Sharpe ratio of 0.5, 
then it would have to fall the the, the portfolio return would have to go down by half of a standard deviation 0.5 uh, standard deviations in order for that portfolio to underperform the, the risk-free investment. So there are a lot of different uses of, of Sharpe ratio, but if you're just going to remember one thing, just remember that it's, it's a risk-adjusted measure. It's saying, okay, what is the biggest, or, or when, when we're looking at a portfolio and we're evaluating it, we're saying, how much reward are we getting per unit of risk for this portfolio? And then if we've got portfolio A, portfolio B, portfolio C, we can actually go and rank these portfolios based on their Sharpe ratio. And the one with the highest Sharpe ratio is going to be the one that's giving you the biggest expected reward per unit of risk or volatility.